Stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid because I know that you.
Line. Um, today or to, is it today or tomorrow? Before we go live online, I'm not sure if it's today or tomorrow. Uh, Sue is tomorrow. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for another day, another opportunity we have to be in your house. We thank you, Father, for all that you've done in our lives this week. We thank you, Father, for the times that you have forgiven us. We thank you for the times that you have guided us. We thank you for the times that you have given us insight or wisdom. We thank you for the times you've protected us, maybe without us even knowing it. Thank you for your provision. There's so many things that we could thank you for, that things that we just don't even think about and take for granted. But Father, this morning, we, we just want to pause and say thank you. Thank you for giving us this opportunity this morning. Father, we pray that your name will be glorified in all that's said and done here. We welcome you in our midst. Be with those of our number who couldn't be here today for whatever reason. Father, we pray that you will... Be with them and keep them safe and let them know that we miss them. Father, we ask now that you would just guide our thinking and our, thought, our, our thoughts and our, our actions, the words of our mouth, the intents of our heart as we go into this service. Father, let us honor you in what we say and do. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, John, I think I'm going to change my mind here. Um, I gotta write something down. We, uh, Lynn Reinstra is a lady who we've come to know, and I, and I want the kids to see this. Um, she's a lady we've come to know that works with Samaritan's Purse. She's one of the directors of Samaritan's Purse. And uh, the offering that we took here in our church for the work that's being done in Florida was added to offerings that have been taken across the Covenant Brethren Church and all in all it has added up to somewhere in excess of I think $27,000 that was sent down to Samaritan's Purse for recovery work from the hurricane. And uh, Lynn Reinstra sent a message. Lynn is one of the four regional directors for Samaritan's Purse, and she's somebody that I've got to know personally. Um, she's a wonderful lady. Uh, we've been to dinner, she and, and some others uh, with Covenant Brethren. We've, we've gone to dinner with her and got to know her. She's an incredible lady, but she sent this message, and she just recorded it on her phone, and uh, I would like to, I'd like you to see it. I'd like you to play it for you. So, John, can you go ahead with that? Hello, friends in the Covenant Brethren Church. We're so grateful for our partnership in the gospel with you all. So grateful for your gifts to Hurricane Ian Relief. So grateful that some of you have already come down and volunteered and others will follow. 
The situation here in Southwest Florida is dire. I'm actually in Fort Myers, Florida today, helping with a crew who's going to muck out a home that was flooded. We're gonna remove debris from the yard. We're gonna tarp the roof. But really what we're here to do, friends, is to share the hope that is only found in knowing Jesus Christ and trusting him for salvation. Your denominations, your church's gifts and prayers and service are helping to promote that message among hurting homeowners in Fort Myers and in Punta Gorda and in Englewood, Florida. So far, we've seen over a thousand families served by 5,000 volunteers. And here's the best news of all, over 200 people have said, I want to follow Jesus as well. Homeowners who a month ago did not even know who he was or what he did for them. So rejoice with us and know that you have a part in this gospel ministry. To God be the glory. Isn't that cool? I thought you needed to see that. Um, so before we send the kids down, we have a tradition that we've done here for years. And uh, today is Shoebox Sunday, if you hadn't guessed. Um, and um, we want to uh, ask the kids to help with praying over the shoeboxes and getting the shoeboxes out. So I'd like all the teens and kids to come up here right now, if you would. Any of the teens and kids that are here, come on up. Don't be bashful. Need all of you. Thank you. Need all of you. Any of you that can come up, please come up. Come on up here on stage and grab a shoebox or two. <laughs> let's, let's come. Grab a couple, one or two shoe boxes. Wait a minute, guys. Don't go anywhere yet because we want to have prayer over them, okay? We have no idea where these shoe boxes will go. Possibly Africa, possibly South America. They could go anywhere. But they're going to kids that maybe have never had a Christmas present before in their lives. But even more than that, they're going to carry a message of God's love in the gospel to them. And it's very possible that the shoeboxes that you are holding will be responsible for starting a church somewhere in the world. Um, so it's pretty incredible. So we want to ask God to do something great through these shoeboxes. So if you guys will, let's just pray. Do you know what it, what it means to pray a prayer of blessing over something? It's to ask God to use these shoeboxes in a way that will allow God to do something great through them. So we're just going to have a word of prayer, and we're going to ask God to bless these and to use them in a mighty way, okay? Let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, as the kids of our church hold these shoeboxes, Father, we pray that they would just be infused with your love. We pray, Father, that, they, that the kids holding them would realize that they are holding in their hands a precious gift, not because of the contents of the box, but because of what it represents. It represents your love. It represents the message of Jesus' love going out to a child that maybe has never heard of Jesus in their life before. Father, we pray that you will use these boxes to glorify your name, to lead children and moms and dads into a relationship with you. And Father, we pray a blessing over these. Pray that you will bless them in such a way that lives will be changed through these boxes and that your name will be glorified. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. John, why don't you just play something? And I'm going to ask you guys, there's a van outside and... Who was going out to, Marcus was going out, who else was going out, Josh? Okay, you guys go out and help them get it loaded into the van, and you guys just take them outside. If you can carry more than you have, that's okay. Um, carry what you can carry. In Christ alone, my hope is found. 
She is my light, my strength, yeah. my soul. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter. My all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, oh, the wrath of God was satisfied forever. Okay, we're going to go ahead and dismiss the kids to junior church. So if you guys want to go on down to junior church as you come in, you can. Um, we'll dismiss the kids to junior church. So, Jeremiah. Just go out and tell them that they can go down to junior church as they come in. While they're doing that, let's stand together and sing, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. Right, you may be seated. We have some announcements we need to take care of this morning real quickly. Um, of course, we want to remind you, if you're watching online, 
uh, and we've developed quite a number of people now that watch online. Uh, if you're watching, please, uh, if you have a prayer request, send it in and we'll add those uh, to our list later on. Um, today after church, uh, play practice and uh, Christmas play practice. That'll be right after church today. And again, if you, wanna, if you have a child that you want to be in the Christmas program, uh, see Vicki or Debbie, not Debbie, Sandy, thank you. Uh, and uh, they will see that you get added in. Oh, we got a birthday, okay. We got more than one birthday. We got a couple of birthdays. We got three birthdays, that's right. Four birthdays, oh my goodness. Let's bring the birthdays up. <laughs> All right. Is it your birthday or his? Both. Both. Okay. All right. All right. Let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friends. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, guys. Thank you, Martha, for bringing that to my attention. Um, of course, today we've uh, talked about, we've already done many of the shoeboxes. Uh, the youth are going to put together about probably another 10 or so shoeboxes tonight. So we're going to have youth meeting tonight at 5 o'clock. And uh, so we need all of our youth there and we'll, go, we'll load in the van, we'll go down to Walmart, we'll buy the stuff that we need uh, with the money that we have. We have, uh, we're going to put the plate back there one more time um, as church is ending, Bug, not now, but as church is ending, we'll, we'll put the plate back there, okay? Um, but uh, anyway, if you want to donate towards buying for shoeboxes, if you didn't get to do a shoebox and you want the youth to do a shoebox for you, uh, just you can put some money in the offering plate. Maybe you couldn't afford to do a whole shoebox or weren't able to do a whole shoebox. Uh, you can put the money in the offering plate and the kids will go shopping and uh, buy the stuff and put some shoeboxes together tonight. Uh, also tonight, junior youth at 5 p.m. So uh, junior and senior youth will be here tonight. Monday, is this correct? Where's Vicky at? Is that right? Okay, this Monday, I sometimes, I'm not sure whether I've got it right. But Mops will be here at the church at 5.30. Tuesday Bible study at 7 o'clock. Go ahead. The new daily breads are back in the back. If you, if you haven't got one or if you've never used a daily bread, um, it's a great little devotional. Uh, and you're welcome to pick one up. They're just a great thing to have by your bedside. Uh, get up in the morning, open it up, read through the devotional, start your day off right. They're just a great little devotional that you, can, uh, that you can read through. If you want to make a donation, you can put a donation in the box. Everything in that box goes to Daily Bread for the, pro for the printing of the booklets. Uh, Women's Fellowship will be this Wednesday at 6.30. All the ladies of the church are welcomed and invited to attend. Food pantry, we continue to collect food for. Uh, I need to change some of the suggestions there, but those are just suggestions. It can be, you know, you can, you can come up with anything. Go ahead. Um, we still ha have been collecting filler items. Obviously, uh, I don't know if anybody brought in any in today. The disaster trip going to Florida, uh, there's still time. I, I thought last week was the last, but there's not. There's still time if you would like to go. There's a couple of us that are going to be going. Um, if you would like to go December 12th through the 17th, there's still time for you to sign up for that. Are there any other announcements? Yes. Okay, so next Saturday, if you're coming to Tiffany's shower, uh, let Dee Dee or Sandy know so they know how to plan. Uh, so, good deal. Yeah, Josie? Um, yeah, yeah, we'll, we can get the other van to go down to Walmart. Yep. Yes? 
Okay. 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 Yeah. Um, Dakota has messed up, and he knows he's messed up, and he's messed up royal. Um, you know, it's amazing how you think something is not a big deal, and you do the next thing, and it doesn't feel like it's that big a deal, and then all of a sudden you're caught in something that is a big deal, and you find yourself sitting in jail. And that's what's happened with Dakota. Uh, his address is back there. If you can send him a letter, you can't send him a card. It has to be a letter because they scan. If you didn't hear Sandy, they scan it in and give him the copy. That keeps people from putting anything on the card that, or the letter that he might. Basically, it drugs. Yeah, it's a drugs thing. Um, you can put a drop. You can put a drop of LSD or something like that on a, on a letter. And uh, all they got to do is lick it and, and get it. So they scan it, and then they give them the copy. Uh, so uh, that's, that's what it is. But a letter doesn't even have to be a long letter. A letter would mean a lot to him. So address is back there. Any other announcements? Okay. I want to take a moment for prayer requests, too, that we need to add to our prayer list. Uh, Angus Brake is in the hospital in Winchester. He, uh, his appendix ruptured, and uh, he's gone through surgery. He's doing okay, but uh, needs, needs our prayer. Also, Danielle Thompson sent me a, a, a message this morning. She's really sick, and uh, she just is asking for prayer or needing prayer. So we want to keep Danielle in our prayers as well. Other prayer requests you may have. Yeah, Juanita? Joyce Lehman, okay? Okay, all right, Delta. Okay, uh-huh. Okay. Going to Haiti? That's a volatile place right now. And also prayers for the nation. Yes. Prayers for our nation. Pardon me? William Bean, okay. I don't recognize that name. No, I don't think so. Yes. 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 Uh-huh. Oh my. Wow. Okay. For those of you that didn't know already, um, they, um, Amanda, is a, it's a detached retina. Her retinas are, her retinas are detaching in her eyes, and she has been virtually blind. They've been trying to do surgeries to stabilize her and recover some of her sight. And it sounds like some of it is coming back. And so praise God um, for that. Uh, that's, that's incredible. Uh, there are two on the, two on the, uh, that came in from outside, the Greg Bland family. Of course, we just had Greg's funeral this, um, this week. And Alma Lyon is in recovery. Other prayer requests you might have, yeah. Mm -hmm. DJ Bohr family. family, okay. Mm -hmm. Linda Jackson and also Linda Dorian, we had the Southern Refugee Church. Okay. Okay, Linda Jackson and Dorman, okay. Yes.
<laughs> so that's a praise report. I need to lose my taste. <laughs> All right, so praise report, yeah. Any other prayer requests? Any unspoken prayer requests? Yes, okay. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, Oh, it's so easy to take this moment for granted. It's so easy just to think this is the time of the service that we have prayer. So let's bow our heads and pray this prayer. And then we'll be on to the next part of the service. But Father, it's so much more than that. Father, there are families this morning that are suffering and hoping that somebody is praying for them. There are people who are struggling with doubts and fears and situations that they don't know how to overcome. And they're hoping and praying that somebody is praying for them. There are people who have lost people. There are people in fear of losing friends and family. Father, I just heard of a young man this morning who in slavery to drugs overdosed and lost his life this morning. Oh God, hear our prayer. Father, don't let this become routine for any of us because, Father, in some cases it's a matter of life and death. In other cases it's a matter of, of just peace and, and help and comfort. Father, none of us are worthy to come into your presence. But Father, please forgive our sins and look past our failings. And let us come before you, hear our prayer, and touch the lives of these who's, who have requested prayer, whether spoken or unspoken. Father, touch these individuals and Meet them at their point of need. Father, thank you for letting us come into your presence now. This is not routine. This is precious. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. I was thinking last night whenever I was um, thinking about songs to sing and I was thinking about who God is and what he has done in our lives. I was thinking about grace and you know we talk about this stuff all the time. We talk about God's grace and we talk about God's love. But do you understand? <laughs> that we deserve death. We deserve hell. We deserve, we don't deserve God's love. And I know you've heard that all your lives. But do you get what that means? And God's grace. Unmerited favor, a willingness to give us something we didn't deserve. Because let's be honest, none of us are as faithful to him as we should be. None of us give him the attention he deserves. And yet his grace just continues to pour out of him. And shed his love into our lives. So I found two songs, not songs we're real familiar with, but they're about the grace of God. Let's worship together as we stand together. Where's my helpers?
I need all of you up here this morning. Any of you that'll come? Where are they at? Holly, have you given up on us? Any of you that'll come up? so precious you know there are a lot of things that are going to fail in this life in this world how many's had a car fail them in the last month I knew there'd be somebody you know um, something in your life in the last month or last time has failed you has let you down but God's love never fails God's love never fails. What a precious promise. Sing with us. Your love never fails. If I ran away, your love never fails I know 
I still make mistakes, but you have new mercies for me every day. Cause your love never fails. You stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the After a long night of marching, day and night, Lee, General Lee, and the exhausted army of Northern Virginia made camp outside, just east of, east of Appomattox Courthouse on April 8th. Lieutenant General Ulysses S. Grant sent Lee a letter on the 7th, and he asked him, to consider surrendering. The Southern General refused Grant. And he said, I don't think the emergency has arisen to call for the surrender of this army. But he offered to, Grant, he offered to meet Grant at 10 o'clock the next morning in the open between the two fields of battle and discuss a possible peaceful outcome. Having watched the battle that had ensued through field glasses, Lee said, there's nothing left for me to do but go and see General Grant. I would rather die a thousand deaths 
But meeting General Grant at the McLean House, Lee said, we are pressed and ready to surrender. And then he asked a question. He said, what are your terms? And General Grant looked at him. These two had been bitter enemies. Their armies had killed each other mercilessly. There had been many people that were friends and family that had died at the hands of the southern soldiers. And the thought that terms were going to be very harsh were very real in the minds of the Confederate soldiers. So Lee very hesitantly looked at him and said, what are your terms? Expecting the worst. But surprisingly, it wasn't judgment. It wasn't prison. It wasn't retribution. The terms were to stop fighting and start living. Put down your weapons, go home and plant your fields. The soldiers who hadn't eaten in days were given meal rations. They were given horses and mules to plow fields. The war was over, but for many, it was the start of life and living again. Letting go of hate, grudges, anger, jealousy, resentment. These things can be very difficult. These things are the result of harmful acts that people do and harmful words that are spoken. It can be things that have built up over time because it was never resolved. And feelings just continue to grow. We live in angry times. I'm almost to the point I can't bear to watch the news anymore. Because it seems like all that you see on the news is anger, hatred, jealousy, people hurting one another. People doing things for no reason that makes any sense whatsoever to hurt other people. The world continues to divide more and more over political and social and religious and economic views that seem so far apart that you can't even see the middle ground. I'm not saying you should compromise your principles. Especially not biblical principles. But that doesn't mean you should walk around angry all the time and let that anger spill over into areas of your life that it has no business being. Peter must have had a similar struggle. In Matthew chapter 18, we read about a question that Peter asked Jesus. It's found in verses 21 to 35. I know you're familiar with this passage, but read it with me once again. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? That seemed like a lot to Peter. Man, if I forgive him seven times, surely I've done my duty. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven in other words, he was just saying, just keep on forgiving. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servant. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had that the payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him saying, Master, have patience with me and I will pay you all. The master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him and forgave his debt. In case you haven't got the picture here, God is the master and we are the servants with the great debt. Verse 28. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. 
So his fellow servant fell down at his feet, begging him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And he would not, but went and threw him into prison until he could pay the debt. God has forgiven us a great debt. And yet we walk around treating other people like they owe us a great debt. Like we can't forgive as we have been forgiven. Verse 31, so when his fellow servants saw what he had done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. And his master, after he called him, said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due him. So my heavenly father, please hear this. Jesus said, so my heavenly father also will do to each of you from his heart. Who, to each of you. If each of you from his heart do not forgive his brother his trespasses. That is a stern warning, folks. That is a harsh warning. God's saying, if you're not willing to forgive, if you're not willing to do what I have done for you, why should I treat you any better? That's frightening. It's sobering. Forgiveness can be hard. I know that. Anger can be like a red bud, a red bud tree. You say, what in the world are you talking about? Anybody here ever tried to dig up a wild red bud tree and transplant it? It doesn't work. I love red bud trees. And so I went out into the woods and I knew what the deal was with them. So I went out into the woods years ago and I found a very young one. And I dug real deep trying to get all of the taproot because you see red buds have a taproot that goes down deep into the soil, just a single taproot. And if you break that taproot, the tree won't survive. I couldn't get it all. And I kept it alive for several weeks, just watering it every day and every day and every day, but eventually it died because of that deep taproot. Anger is like that in our lives sometimes. It has a deep taproot that goes down deep into our lives. And it's almost impossible to get it out. It's almost impossible to exercise it from our lives. because. And, and the truth of the matter is, you can't. It'll destroy you. Anger, hatred, resentment. If we're not careful, it can become something that we think looks good. We think we're standing on a principle. I should feel this way. No, you shouldn't. I'm heartbroken over the breakup of the Church of the Brethren right now. I've cried, I've prayed, I've met with people who are hurting. I see our former district struggling just to continue to exist. I don't believe we did the wrong thing, but I'm heart sick. Even the people that I don't agree with, I don't feel hatred towards. Because they believe they're doing the right thing. It may be a foolish belief, but they believe they're right. We need to get to the place where we're willing to forgive and let go of hatred and anger without compromising our beliefs. We don't, hear, hear me on this, we don't have to agree with somebody to forgive them. I've 
hurt, unforgiven. Let's anger become very familiar. <laughs> there was a, there's a man that comes to the press quite often. I'm not going to tell you his name. But he comes to the press quite often. He, and he's angry all the time. He has this thing that he... It's, it's the soapbox that he stands on all his life. And it's, it's, he has this thing about the haves and the have-nots. And how the haves should give what they have to the have-nots. And, and the wealth of the world should be spread out evenly so nobody goes without. And, and in a perfect world, in a wonderful world, it's a wonderful idea. But he's angry at everybody who has a little bit. Because he thinks... That they're ruining the world. And he comes in. He writes letters to the editor. And he does all sorts of stuff. And he got very aggressive with Camille one day. Because Camille, he, was, he was just. Issuing hatred. From the letter that he brought in. And Camille said she wasn't going to. Wasn't going to publish that letter. In the letter to the editor. So he was really angry. And I happened to be there. And uh, I said, come on. And he walked outside with me, and we talked. And I said, look, I understand what you're saying. And it's true, there are people hurting in this world, and there are people that could make a difference. But I said, let me ask you something. Besides writing angry letters and screaming at people, what are you doing to make a difference? He said, well, what do you mean? And I said, you can walk around your whole life being angry, or you can do something. He said, I don't understand. <laughs> and he didn't. He doesn't work. He lives in a house that I think was given to him. And I said, look. I said, I'm not trying to brag. I'm just going to use myself as an example. I said, I don't have a lot of money. But... I've helped repair a school for the deaf in Jamaica. I've built homes and churches in Guatemala and Romania. I've helped provide school books for children in Africa. I've helped drill a well for a village in Africa that was without water. We've given away Tons of food. We've helped build a school for children in Guatemala. We've sponsored kids in Africa and Guatemala for education and food and medical help. I said, that didn't come from my money. I helped raise the money to do it and then went and did the work. I've done disaster work in various places around the country when disasters have struck. I said, what are you doing? Besides just sitting around being angry. And he just stared at me. I said, why don't you go do something? And I walked away. Before I got angry. If we're not careful, anger and bitterness can become something that's so familiar to us that it just becomes part of our lives and who we are. We let hurt build into bitterness. We allow it to take root and become familiar. And when that happens, we stop looking for ways to improve the situation. Romans chapter 12, verses 17 to 21 says, Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give, but, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if, you're in, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Folks, it comes down to this. 
we should forgive because we've accepted forgiveness. This is the example that Christ gave us. Colossians chapter 2 verses 13 and 14 says, And if you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made you alive together with him, having forgiven all your trespasses. Hear that. Hear those words. He has forgiven all your trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which is contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. I read about a man by the name of Abyss Hamid. His, he grew up in Iraq. His mother was a Muslim. His dad was a Catholic. When he was about 8 or 10 years old, his dad, they found out, hadn't served his mandatory year of service in the military. And he was arrested and thrown in prison. He was thrown in an underground prison, only allowed out two minutes a day into the daylight. The rest of the time he was in darkness. He was there for a year. And during that year, he cried out to God for help and strength. When he came out of that prison, he was a different man, Hamid said. All of a sudden, he was more loving. He didn't care about just making money and, and having things for himself. But he cared about his family and he cared about his relationship with God. When the Iraq war started, Hamid decided to volunteer to help the American army. And he became a translator. And... Served in the security force, I think it was, yeah. And one day in 2005, he was asked to stop a car to check it. So he stepped out in the road and he held up his hand to stop the car. And as the car drew near, it blew up. He was thrown clear to the side, covering his face to try and protect him from the rest of the shrapnel that was coming. Other people closer to the car were dead. Hamid thought to himself, why was I spared? What's going on here? And so he had a friend by the name of Steve who was a soldier. And he had watched Steve every day reading his Bible. And he began to ask questions about what is in that book and Steve began to share with him what the Bible had to say. And one day he came to Steve and he said, I want to know. I want to know how to become a Christian. And so Steve shared with him how he could become a Christian. That day he gave his life to Christ. And he said, all of the anger just kind of went out of my body. Because I realized I was forgiven. And I had been forgiven completely. And if I can be forgiven, then I must also forgive. Today he lives in Lancaster, Pennsylvania with his wife and children. He started Hamid Ministries. And he goes around to churches and different groups sharing his testimony about how God transformed his life. You know, I think sometimes even as Christians, even though we have been forgiven, we forget about what that means. We forget about the fact that God took everything, He took all of the guff, all of the sin, all of the, all that's wrong with our life. All of the things that literally He abhors. And He placed it under the blood of Christ and He forgave us that and continues to forgive us. We forget about that. We accept it. But we forget we've been forgiven. And need to exercise that same forgiveness. I just want to conclude with this. You know, our world is being consumed with hatred and anger, and selfishness, and retribution. I don't think that's what the world wants. 
but it's quickly becoming all we know. It needs to see a difference in us. It needs to see something different in us. I I, I think we forget that people are watching our lives. How many soldiers and civilians have died in wars that have never been, never should have been? World War II was started by the anger and greed of a petty dictator. People are dying in the Ukraine today for the same thing. How many families have been destroyed because of an unwillingness to forgive and a desire to hold on to a grudge and revenge? It's only going to stop when we come to realize that in Christ, we've all been offered forgiveness. Forgiveness we didn't deserve. And if God can forgive us at the cost of His Son... Amy, would you allow one of your boys to die so I could be forgiven? You couldn't. I couldn't either. But God did. If I'm forgiven at that cost, how can we not forgive? Colossians 3.13 The Lord has forgiven you so you also must forgive. Let's pray. Heavenly Father I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what our world has become. I'm sorry for what we sometimes as Christians have become. Holding on to anger and bitterness and hatred. Holding on to a desire to hurt somebody. Simply because we got our feelings hurt. Oh God forgive us of this sin. And remind us that we have been forgiven. And we can do the same. If we place it in your hands. Father bless the message to your glory. I pray in Jesus name. Amen. We're going to take our. Closing hymn. We're going to sing our closing hymn. Amazing grace. The oldest, most recorded song in the history of music. It's the most recorded song because of the message that it carries. I like to watch the show The Voice. And it always amazed that this, this past season, there was this little girl. Maybe that was, I don't know, it was one of those shows. There was this little girl that walked out of the audience and walked up on stage and she sang Amazing Grace a cappella. and at first the whole room was hushed and then it erupted in applause over a truth not just that little girl's talent but over a truth that we have been extended Amazing Grace And we need to extend that same grace beyond ourselves. Let's stand together as we sing. If God's spoken to your heart today, I invite you to come. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior, I invite you to come today. And let me show you from God's Word how you can receive Him as your Savior. Let's sing together.
Greg, could I ask you to close in prayer for us? I've heard a thousand stories of what 